Hey guys, so, um, location change, not location change, background change, okay, setting change, I guess, um, so, I have finally gone with something, I have taken my bed out of my room, and I bought, I'm gonna buy, uh, this couch from my brother, Ryan, um, he let me put it in here for now, and then when I get my next paycheck, I'm gonna, uh, buy it from him, but, yeah, it's in here until then, and then after, and uh, so I've been moving stuff around in my room and, uh, figuring out where I'm gonna put stuff, so this will probably end up changing a bit, but just for these videos, just cause I have to, I, I, I gotta record them and get them done because I've been being kind of lazy about it since the weekend just I don't know why I just have been um you know sometimes I just sometimes I just need a couple days to be lazy you know I didn't I didn't really like work or anything I just I needed to be lazy but um let's talk about Ant-Man so um after being forced out of his own company by his former pro protege, Darren Cross, Dr. Hank Pym recruits the talents of Scott Lang, a master thief just released from prison. Lang becomes Ant-Man, trained by Pym and armed with a suit that allows him to shrink in size, possess superhuman strength, and control an army of ants. So, first off, Paul Rudd is amazing as Scott Lang. He is one of the best Marvel superheroes we've gotten. He adds a lot of charisma and humor that I think only he could bring to the part. Like, no other actor could bring as much charm, I think, to the character of Scott Lang as Paul Rudd can. And he's amazing. I absolutely love his character in this, and I was so happy when he popped up in Civil War. It was a pretty small part, but it was still fun. And I can't wait to see Ant-Man and the Wasp, which comes out next July, and that's going to be my birthday movie next year, because every, every year uh, for my birthday, I go out with my friends and see a movie. So, And that one comes out on July 8th, so that's the... That's gonna be the birthday movie next year, so that's fun. And then, Michael Douglas as Hank Pym is also amazing. Uh, he is one of the best supporting characters slash mentors in the MCU. And he gets quite a lot of memorable and funny scenes. And uh, there was, I believe, a cut scene from the movie showing... Uh, like a flashback to him as the Ant-Man, and I really hope we get to see something, something with that soon. I know in Ant-Man and the Wasp, they cast Michelle Pfeiffer as, uh, Janet Van Dyne. So hopefully we'll get quite a few flashbacks to the Hank Pym Ant-Man days, where he and Janet were working together as Ant-Man and the Wasp. I think that's just what they should do, but, um, then Corey Stoll as Darren Cross is one of the more unique and fun Marvel villains, in my opinion. Uh, he's great because he's just a simple character. He's, he's just a bad guy. I mean, yeah, he, he has, like, the tragic backstory where he was neglected by his mentor or whatever, but Really, he's just a bad guy. I mean, he is what... He's what Hank Pym would have become if Hank Pym kind of... became more of a douche. Because he... Hank Pym even says in the movie, I saw too much of myself, and that's why he kind of started to neglect him, so... That also adds to, um... Hank Pym's character, because, like, okay, he's not... He's not a completely good guy, but he he's a good guy at heart, and so that's, that's cool. And honestly, um, I think he, he has quite a few shades of Obadiah Stane from the first Iron Man, and that's not a bad thing. I mean, they're even both bald.
called, so there's that. And I think Stoll just has a lot of fun with the character, especially during the third act when he becomes the Yellow Jacket. That stuff's pretty cool. And then uh, Evangeline Lilly as Hope Van Dyne is really good. Uh, I thought her character had the biggest emotional arc of the movie because she's still dealing with um, the loss of her mother and the fact that she and her father are estranged. So, um, is that the correct word? Estranged? Yeah. Um, so... That's cool, and she does a really good job with the part, and I am looking forward to actually seeing her in action as the Wasp in the next movie, though. That'll be interesting, because in this movie, we just get to see her as Hope. She's just a normal person. I mean, she's really good with martial arts and stuff, but for the most part, she's just a normal person. So it'll be very cool to actually get to see her in action in the suit and doing that, that'll be really fun, I think. Um, so, a major, a major standout for me, and I'm, uh, this will be it for talking about the cast, um, Michael Pena, one of my favorite actors, um, he's just a really funny guy in practically everything he's in, and he really shines as Luis. Before I saw the movie, I didn't even know he was gonna be in it, uh, so when he does end up showing up at the beginning of the movie, I, I was just like, Michael Pena! And then he has some of the funniest moments in the movie, and a good chunk of the humor is, like, just owned by him. So that's really cool. Um, alright, so I've been talking about, like, the humor and stuff and the fun of it because that's the main draw of this movie is the fact that it's really fun and humorous. And it's so good. Every character has funny moments. The movie never feels like a comedy, but um, it feels more like a heist comedy movie, I guess. So that technically is a comedy, but... It feels more heist-like than comedy-like, so that's really nice. Uh, the heist elements are great. I love the first heist bit where uh, Scott breaks into Hank's house. It's really fun because it's more of like a classic style heist, like an Ocean's Eleven type thing. Of course, on a really small scale, just breaking into a house, not a casino. Uh, that was the Ocean's Eleven, right? Breaking into the casino. Yeah, I think so. <coughs> but, um, yeah, I really liked the heist. And then the third act heist was really great because we got to see, again, the bigger scale heist involving superhero stuff. So that was really cool. I like that you see you get, like, the no the more classic kind of heist just to be like, okay, here you go, here's the normal heist, and then they're like, oh yeah, and here's one where the guy that can shrink and talk to ants. And speaking of the guy who can shrink and talk to ants, the shrinking scenes are great. Uh, I know they used a lot of, like, I believe it's called macro photography or micro photography. Um, but it all, it all looks incredible. The CGI is very well done. Uh, I believe they had like Paul Rudd on like a blue screen for some of it and then just getting like his face for some of it and then mixing it with CG and the macro photography and it all looks incredible. It all just blends together very well. And some of the most memorable scenes in this movie are the ones where he does shrink and you get to see things from his perspective. Particularly the bathroom scene leading into the whole scene with him like falling into the floorboards and cracks and into other people's houses and stuff. That stuff is all great. And that's probably one of my favorite sequences in the movie, especially because you get the Garrett Morris... I believe is the name of the comedian, uh, his cameo in there, because he 
played, um, he played Ant-Man on an SNL skit, I think, in the 80s. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's Garrett, it's Garrett Morris, or something like that. God, I feel like I'm getting it wrong. I swear, I think that's right. But, yeah. <coughs> Well, yeah, so, uh, the action is also very well done. I mean, there's not a ton of it in the movie, but when it is there, it's really good. The main fight between Ant-Man and the Yellow Jacket is a really fun battle, and the visuals are incredible, because we get a little bit of fighting at, like, normal size. You get a little bit of f fighting with, uh, them being small, and you get a little bit of fighting where one of them is big and one of them is small, uh, there's the fight scene in the suitcase. That was really fun. Because I love how they're just like... These two tiny dudes and they're like... He shoots a laser beam and it busts a, a lifesaver into pieces. Uh, they're bouncing off of an iPhone. And then it cuts to outside and you just... It's just very anticlimactic. It's just a suitcase falling and a little laser beam shooting out. It's... It's funny. Again, I keep going back to the humor. <laughs> um, then, so, I can't talk about this movie without talking about Edgar Wright. Um, he was not really involved with the movie by the time it went into production. But there are still a lot of traces of his DNA, scat like his creative DNA scattered throughout the movie. Um, especially the scenes where Luis is telling Scott his, uh, stories, and it's, like, it's shot and edited very similarly to the parts in Shaun of the Dead where, uh, Sean tells Ed the plan. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about, I, I, I don't know if I'm describing it the best way, but if you know what I'm talking about, like, watch Shaun of the Dead... The scene where he tells Ed the plan, and then watch Ant-Man, the scene where Luis tells Scott about the uh, lead that he got. You can see where there are some traces of Edgar Wright's creative DNA in there. And also just like the, the fast-paced way it's like shot and edited. It's very Edgar Wright in style, this movie. It's not, it doesn't quite hit all the marks that makes it feel like an Edgar Wright movie, and... I feel like Edgar Wright is the only one that can do that, mainly because that's why we kind of associate that style with him, is because he kind of perfected it. But, I mean, you can definitely still feel traces of his uh, input in there. And I did like this movie a lot. I really loved this movie. I just... If you guys know, Edgar Wright is probably my favorite director of all time, and any chance to see him do other movies is kind of something I jump at. So when I heard he was doing Ant-Man, I was really excited, and then when they announced that he left, and I was kind of in the movie news world at that time when, uh, I believe he showed off the test footage at Comic-Con, and I was so excited, because at that point... I had seen Shaun of the Dead a million times and loved it. I had seen um, Hot Fuzz, not as much as Shaun of the Dead, but still loved it. And, um, yeah, I just, I was excited about Edgar Wright doing Ant-Man, because I was like, if it's anything like Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz, that could be a really unique and fun movie. And this did end up being a unique and fun movie, just not in the way that I think it would have been if Edgar Wright had done it. And therein lies my biggest disappointment with this movie, is that it had the chance to be quite possibly the best Marvel movie ever made because of how Edgar Wright does his movies, because Edgar Wright has not had a miss yet. I mean, yeah, you can argue that uh, The World's End isn't as good as the other two Cornetto trilogy movies, and it's probably his weakest movie. I I would have to probably admit that. It's still a great movie. It's just probably his weakest one. I would say it's like Baby Driver, Scott Pilgrim, Hot Fuzz, Shaun of the Dead, and then The World's End. 
I haven't seen Fistful of Dollars, that's why I didn't put it on the list. I haven't seen Fistful of Dollars yet, and so once I see that, I will probably figure out where it lies on the scale. Um, but, yeah, um, I just, I feel like Marvel, Edgar Wright delivered. He had, I believe, three movies under his belt at this point. He had the Shaun of the... Or, four movies. He had Fistful of Dollars, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and Scott Pilgrim. All of which are great movies. Except I haven't seen Fistful of Dollars, but... I just went through that. Um, but basically, he was hit... He was, like... Hit after hit after hit. And so Marvel should have just been like, you know what? Do what you need to do. He didn't want to make it as connected to the rest of the MCU as Marvel wanted him to. They should have just let him do his thing and then been like, hey, can you at least put, like, one reference to the Avengers in there? Just one. And I'm sure he would have probably been like, yeah, fine, it's not a huge deal. And the movie would have been all the better for it, honestly, because... Yeah, this movie is a really good movie. I would even go as far as to say it's a great movie. It could have been amazing. It could have been incredible. It could have been something so unique and amazing that, like, that could, could have been the gold standard for Marvel movies. And at this point in time, currently, I've... I say that Guardians Volume 2 is the gold standard for Marvel movies, but if Edgar Wright had made Ant-Man, that would have been the gold standard, probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I wish that Marvel just, Kevin Feige, I wish he would have just been like, you know what, we trust you, go ahead, make the movie that you want to make instead of trying to bully him into making it more of an MCU movie. But I still really like this movie. I that That's my biggest flaw that I have, is the fact that it wasn't directed by someone else. So when that's the biggest flaw I have with the movie, you can tell I really, really like this movie. I just wish Edgar Wright had done it. And I especially hate that he decided to stop working on this, because it's probably... Not saying that this is a bad thing, but it's probably going to turn Edgar Wright off of ever really probably doing a big budget studio comic book movie ever again. Which means that my dream of seeing a Flash movie directed, written and directed by Edgar Wright is probably never going to happen. Because that that is my dream, because The Flash is my favorite DC character. Edgar Wright is my favorite director. I feel like with Edgar Wright's fast-paced style of storytelling, that would really work with The Flash, but, you know, hey, it happens. Anyways, guys, I'm going to give Ant-Man an A+. Thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of Ant-Man if you've seen it. Check out the link in the description to our Patreon page and make a contribution if you would like. Please, thank you. Uh, we... I just recently lowered the prices on there, so, um, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.